All right, so we have our attendees coming in right now. Thank you to all of our speakers for doing your promotions this week and sending the word out to your um, following, some followers. Can you absolutely believe that we are on week nine of EVN Goes Live? The weeks have just really, really flown by. And it's been over 10 weeks of lockdown. So never before in our lives have we not been able to socialize, not been able to celebrate and not be able to be around one another in this way before. But as we, as we always say, there's always a silver lining and with that silver lining has come these online um, sessions because all of these people right here that we have today on our panel they're very very busy people usually on a Saturday they would be out and about they would be entertaining they would be decorating they would be planning they would be photographing um, events and uh, as the UK kind of is coming out of lockdown now, now we're kind of on the other side of it you want to start talking about you know how we are going to come back or how we're going to prepare to come back from this lockdown and what we need to do as professionals and event vendors. So we have a few firsts today. For the first time, we have only one lady on our panel um, and the majority male, but this lady is a very um, strong lady, very capable lady, and she can more than handle herself. Um, and we have Miss Mary, so that's Miss Mary Fashionu. She is an event planner and a business coach. Can we get a round of applause for her, please? <laughs> um, next, we have Mr. Soji Alayo from the Synergy Band. Soji is a singer, he is an entertainer, he's a band leader. He's even a sound engineer. I've seen him twiddling with a few cables or microphones before. And we have him on our panel today. Can we get a round of applause, please, and welcome him to our panel? Thank you. Um, we also have Mr. Kunli Fagvenro Byron from Kunix Events Limited. He is a decorator, event stylist, and consultant, and does many events across the UK. Can we get a round of applause for him, too, please? And last but not least, Mr. Remy Benson, an international photographer and yeah. also now, well, international wedding photographer and he does other events too, but also now the founder of something called Win My Wedding, which he's going to tell us a bit about today. Can we get a round of applause for Remy, please? So thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we are here until 3.30. This is EVN Goes Live, and it's myself, Dean Carby, from the Elite Vendors Network, as well as Laura and Joseph. Thank you very much for co-hosting with me. So, ladies first, as they say, please, Mary, could you tell everyone a little bit more about yourself and uh, tell us the main things that you would like the audience to know about you, please. Thanks, Dean, and thanks for this platform and for inviting me to join the other panelists. So, as Dean said, my name is Mary Fashionu. I am an event planner, and the name of my company is Eminent Events. And I'm also a business coach, and the name of that one is Mary Fash Limited. Okay. And one thing that I would like for you to kind of take away from today for me and for you to know about me is. Um, again, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I'm very strategic with what I do. So for example, my consulting firm, which is the coaching firm, um, I train or I help and coach individuals or professionals who want to start a business or they're already in the business and they're looking for more direction and guidance in moving their business forward or people that are starting and then they need help in starting creating the right foundation, preparing that business for business growth and success. So that's what I do. And Eminent Events, we are an event planning company, but an affordable luxury event planning company. So whatever you have, as long as it's not one pound, we can help you 
plan your event and you know you have a lasting memory of beautiful you know spend time spent with your family and friends so that is just a little about me and what i do i'm sure you get to know more as we get along in the in the conversation today yes thank you very much mary thanks for that introduction and next mr soji elayo sir please let everyone know a little bit more about yourself all right, um, my name is Ade Soji Adelano, but popularly known as Soji Alayo. That's my stage name. Um, I'm a live band entertainer. Um, I'm a music, uh, I'm a uh, production, di uh, di I'm the production director for Synergy Band uh, under the management company of Synergy Production Limited. Um, I'm also into sound um, engineering. I, I do sound for events, concerts, church uh, events and all that. Um, we do hire out um, some gears, backlines, backlines being drums, keyboard, guitar, bass combo, things like that. Um, uh, majorly, we just entertain uh, at people's events globally, UK, America, Nigeria. And um, we do our best to keep people happy, you know, during their events. Okay, thank you, Mr. Soji Elayo, sir. Um, next, can we get Mr. Conley from Connix Events um, saying a bit more about yourself, please? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Conley from Connix Events. Uh, Connix Events is uh, an event company that deals with, we're, we're a one stop shop for events. So, apart from planning, designing, and styling your event, we also decorate. We also do training and um, we have, we're, we're a consultant for a lot of um, event venues for churches um, and um, other vendors. We've been in business for quite a long time. So we have a varied and wide range of, you know, clients and, um, you know, we've been doing this, our expertise is, you know, quite ex extensive. Um, one thing that people say about Koenig's events is that, um, we go beyond our call of duty to, you know, to make sure that any event that we're involved in is a success. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say. And um, thank you for this platform. Thank you for inviting me, uh, Dean and the Elite Vendors too. Nice one, Conley. Thank you so much. Okay, and now Mr. Remy Benson, please say a little bit more about yourself, please, sir. Oh, and we got a bit of a video while Remy speaks about himself and his work. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Remy Benson of Photography by Remy Benson. Uh, for me, photography, I've been around since 2013. I think I got into photography as a hobby. Um, I do a lot of traveling. I actually used to be a landscape photographer before I go into wedding. I think uh, one of my in-laws had a wedding, and I think that's where it spawned from. Personally, um, I like weddings because of the colors, the people, the vibe. Um, so yeah, I've been around since 2013. And um, during this time, we came together to start something I think we'll mention later. We're hoping, we're launching on Monday. Um, I know Dean said I'm the founder and stuff like that. Um, it's actually a group of vendors like everybody in the chat room right now who have come together to give one lucky winner, you know, a free giveaway. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks, Dean, for having me. And thanks, everybody that's in here today. And this is actually my first time doing something like this, so I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> but, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, yeah, Remy's new to Zoom. Um, I had new to Zoom, too. Yes, as, as a lot of us were just a few weeks ago, but we've had to kind of really adapt and get used to doing more things online, for sure, because... Uh, it's one of the only ways to connect with people right now safely. Um, I just want to let everyone know as well, we are, we, we're, we're using a different setting on Zoom today. We are using a, the webinar functionality instead of the meeting. So you may not be able to see everyone on the screen as usual. Today, you can probably only see the panelists. Um, but what you can do, if you check the bottom of your screen, you go to the chat and you can speak, still use the chat box to uh, speak to everyone on uh, that's attending and if you have a specific question you can use the question and answer box as a special question and answer box uh, for anyone that's got a question based upon what any of the panelists um, say. So 
talking about adapting, this has been the time for that for sure. This has probably been one of the biggest words week in, week out. People keep talking about adapting, pivoting, changing your business, creating more streams of income, etc. And so, Mary, I think you're a good person to uh, speak about this first. As as an event planner, now a business coach, um, what changes have you made to your business and what are you advising that your clients do during this time? And then next, Soji, after Mary, please, you have to tell us how you've adapted your live band performances during this time of COVID-19. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dean. So, um, so am I talking on, on, as a business coach or as a event planner? Which one do you want me to? You can speak as whoever you want to be today. <laughs> so you. This is your platform. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think I'll start with being the business coach. I think as a business coach, what has happened, what I noticed regarding the, you know, this pandemic, it was a quick shock because I thought everybody should need my service regardless of pandemic, really. And it was a, a client booked me and... We sent an invoice, everything is done. And then she came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, Mary, I can't do this because now everybody's doing this panic shopping you know, at the beginning of the pandemic. And, you know, so the funds needs to go into that. So priority of people changed because of the pandemic. So that, oh, that's a bummer. I was, I already spent that money before I reached my account. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I had to start thinking people's priorities are changing because of what's going on. So how can I, as a business, then adapt to that situation around me now? So what I've had to do was, okay, what is now people's, you know, their priority at the moment? So I start thinking, even though, yes, you have a family of food as a priority, you know, roof over your head, then I thought, this is the best time for you to actually develop your business, to, you know, plan well for your business system, the processes, whatever it is you need to do. Or if, even if you have a particular business that serves as a necessity, this is time you need to push yourself out there. Don't be too, you know, afraid that people will not buy it. The thing is, one thing I've realized is during this time, people actually have the money for what they deem necessity. And it's not just food, they say as necessity. It's just how their brain is wired. And I've had to now educate people to say why they need me now, to be honest. Um, they, might, they might not know it. So I've had to pull out some things that's missing. So I look for the problem as a, that a, a business is having, and then I put in what I can do to help. So that way they can see, like, you know, I'm, I'm taking out what they need. So they can see that, oh, I actually need this. I need to grow. I need to put a system in place, put a process in place, put better strategies in place to actually adapt to this you know, pandemic. And but another thing that I've had to do is um, kind of reduce my price a little and make it accommodating for people. And that doesn't mean I'm giving, I'm overdoing for less than many. If, for example, my usual session is two and a half hours, and if I'm reducing the price, then I will probably reduce my time as well. It doesn't mean you won't get value for it. You'll get everything you need, but I would just not spend my entire day based on you're paying me 10 pounds now. You know, it doesn't make sense. But it's just for me to say that, look, I understand where you are. I am with you. I empathize with you. What can I do to help? How can I help you? So I've been more up in my clients' face, just being there for them, empathize with them. Some of them have lost their job. Some of them are struggling financially. Then I've introduced installment payments. So you don't have to pay me everything in one go. You can always, you know, pay me three times. That's, that's the most I can do. And I don't have to, I'm not charging you any percentage on that, like other businesses do. So you are more relaxed when you actually, because I don't want you when you're paying me like, hey, this money, and you're not <laughs> concentrating on what we're learning. You know, I just make like, to me, money is great. <laughs> I love money. But the value you get from my service is what matters to me most. And you're, because your success as a business is my success as a business coach. Now, if I move to eminent event, what I've had to do so far, it's a bit quiet at the moment because a lot of time I've been focused on my business coaching business. But I've, I have a few clients that at the wedding plan that I've been planning with them. Now I've had to step in as a consultant to, you know, trying to help with their vendors, changing of dates, like some of them have changed it like four times and I'm like, wow, okay, this is stressing me out. But I've had to be the bridge, you know, to go to the vendors, you know, making sure they're not angry with the change of, you know, dates or the time and things like that. Just mitigating the risk and the, a lot of upsetness that could go on, but just making sure that I'm being a, a counselor at the moment as well. Just making sure they're not too upset or not too sad because the mental health issue comes, you know, with this as well. Because I had my 30th birthday 
party planned and I had to cancel it. And that really messed me up a little bit because you only turn 30 once. And, you know, so I can imagine someone to get married and they have to postpone or not having 500 guests anymore, they're having 30 guests. And like, what's the point anyway? So a lot of that I've had to step in to help my client to see, you know, the light in the dark or just to see the opportunities the challenge that they're having really to be honest and so that's what i've had to do so far and also being a consultant if they need help for people that i'm not even planning event for they can reach us send us a dm or email us so we can help them get through the you know the situation at hand wow what a great comprehensive answer <laughs> there mary thank you very much <laughs> that was really good um and so next soji um, right. how, have you, how have you had to adjust during this time? Okay, uh, thank you, Dean, and thanks to everyone on board. Um, like we all know, live band performances happens right at the event um, venues, and you know you have to come with your your gear, sound equipment, the instrumentalist. In my band, we were about eight of us. So uh, in this period where uh, social distancing is is the norm, and um, you're not allowed to hold event, I mean, I mean event at the moment. So what we've done is we've started doing virtual performances. Um, uh, today by 7 p.m. I've got a 40th birthday party I'll be playing for via Zoom. And, um, you know, uh, we have about 150 to 200 people that will be on board, uh, whereby, you know, myself and my team wow. can still perform in a studio um, uh, and, and do what we do normally on stage right in the um, living room and you know bedroom of, of of people all over the world so it's now not limited to just the clients either we we are serving maybe they're in london or they're in nigeria they can as well send a link to all their family and friends all over the world so it's like it's opening up a bigger platform a wider range you know of audience for us to cap capture and captivate other people and, you know, from this very particular, uh, for using virtual performance, I won't lie to you, it's not easy because um, I was at the studio till about 1 a.m. yesterday, just making sure that things are fine, sound production wise. Zoom is very funny. With Zoom, um, you can't, uh, if, you, if you don't really know how to use the platform, it's designed for webinars, speaking and all that. But for you to um, run it uh, with sound, drums, talking drum, keyboard is a lot of work. So we had to do that and make sure that the quality you will get when we are live on stage is what you'll be getting in your bedroom, in your living room, using your sound bar, and you, you can have the feel of your party taking place right in your living room. So this is what we are doing right now. And, you know, uh, quite a lot of um, clients are, they are embracing the new norm of the virtual performance and they are calling to make inquiries. I'm happy to, you know, to do that. Also, people in maybe U.S., Nigeria, and all over the world can also call us and have us perform for their event virtually without us being there in person. Um, initially, it was a bit of struggle for me. Like, you know, the normal feel, the, the, the drive we get performing for people live on stage, the people spraying you money, you know, it's, it's something. It gives us, you know, that, that, that drive. But at the moment, we just have to embrace the new norm. So what we do is if people want to spray uh, money, um, they, we, we, we scroll our account details. We've got an Ara account, we've got a UK account, a US account, Europe account. You can spray money, we call your name. I mean, like we know in African parties generally, we like, <laughs> we like um, spray money. It's like a culture to us. You know, just when, when you spray the artist or the, the, the musician, they praise your name and you dance, it gives you, you know, it reduces stress. It gives you that joy like, oh, wow, they're calling me, calling my family and stuff like that. So we want to give people the opportunity to still enjoy that same thing, you know, virtually. So once you will see alert, you know, we have immediate, um, immediate alert on our phones to say, okay, so, so person has, has deposited so, so amount in, into our account and we get on it straight away. My manager is working on getting information about who is the next person to call not forgetting the celebrant. One major thing I don't do is when I'm at events, the celebrant called me to, to render a service. And my, um, my primary motive is to satisfy the celebrant. So obviously we pay attention to the celebrants, call their names, praise them, jubilate with them, sing for them. And when it's time to move to client, I mean, to the other guests, we do what we have to do. And also, you know, um, with the help of the host, 
you know, they tell us what next, who next, and things like that. And we are doing our thing easily, and, you know, we just have to embrace the new norm. Also, I've also done a couple of Insta live, Instagram live performances whereby, you know, just to give, let people know that, you know, despite the uh, lockdown that, that is going on, we can still do our thing, you know. Um, now, what this has done for me as a person is, it reduces the cost of uh, hiring a sound equipment for about 500, 1000 capacity. So it's just a, a, a small studio where, you know, we don't need every equipment. And also, you know, so, there's something new that myself and one of my guys is, is also putting together. We normally have about eight people on stage when we are at the live event. But presently, I'm trying to reduce the number to eight. I mean, to four from eight. So we've done a, a couple of looping of, so we merge talking drum and drum set together in a loop. And, you know, that reduces the cost of, you know, going for a talking drummer, a, 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 a drummer, and, you know, you can easily do that on your laptop, synchronize it with the keyboard, guitar, and you are doing what you have to do. And you still get the same quality that you get on stage live on, 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 on Zoom or any other platform. Yeah. Wow, we Soji, that is, I didn't even realize you were doing all of that. That's so interesting. <laughs> I've got a lot of, like, there's, there's a few of our panel members clapping for you because oh, that, you. that adaption there of going from, well, it's, well, first of all, it sounds like you've had to furlough a few of your band members. <laughs> <laughs> you've cut them down. You've cut them down. We have not caught anybody. We've not caught anybody. <laughs> We're still the same eight of us, but, you know, um, going forward, we just have to look for how to cut down a number of things and, you know, work because... The, the, the amount people are paying when we go live, because they are not seeing us live on stage, they might not want to pay the same amount. Of course. Even though I'm ready to sell, you know, let them know, you know what, we still, you are still getting value for your money, but we just have to, one way or the other, work with our clients and make sure that, you know, you know they, we, we don't chat them too much. Yes. Yeah. Wow. 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 Now, this sounds really interesting. I've got some more questions for you, but I'm going to go on to the next panelist. But... Okay. There's some, a lot of questions I think myself and, and some of the uh, attendees will have for you and how you've transitioned from uh, your regular African or Nigerian live band setup to what you're doing now. So, Kunle, let's go to you next, sir. Hi. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I see that you've been uh, keeping yourself very busy. You, you've been interviewing lots and lots of people on on, on Instagram, uh, doing Instagram live sessions. Mm. And unlike uh, Kunle, uh, so unlike, sorry, unlike Soji, you're not really able to provide your service uh, via Zoom. You kind of have to do it there in person. Yeah. So um, how have you been keeping yourself busy and motivated during this time? Um, what's your plans next for uh, post lockdown? And, um, you know, and how, how has it just been doing all the Instagram live sessions that you've been doing? Mm. So um, to start with, the Instagram live thing has always been a thing. You know, chat show has always been a thing in the background that I've always wanted to do, but I didn't really get around to doing it. So I thought, well, there's a lot of time, you know, on our hands. So let's, let's, give, it, um, let's give it a try. And the initial, um, the initial reason was just to give people hope, you know, a lot of my clients were calling to, to ask me what we would do. A lot of them were panicking. And I thought, okay, maybe we should just try and give hope to people out there by bringing other vendors together. And that's how the IG thing started. Now, one of the things that we have been working on or we're working on is um, uh, what we call um, decoration, you know, delivered to the home, home decor, basically. Um, as we all know, everybody's on Zoom, having parties and all that. And, you know, what we're bringing to them is, you know, we can still come and decorate and assure you that, you know, after we've done our decorations, we will disinfect the place if need be and leave. And then you can come back into the space and have your Zoom party. Um, also, we know that uh, in the immediate future, there can be um, large crowd events. So we're working on, you know, um, doing packaged small events for the home, for the gardens and stuff like that. Um, I personally 
I've been trying to train myself. Um, I, I'm, I'm learning how to sew. Um, I'm learning how to make beads. Um, what else? I've been cooking every now and again. My wife and I come up with, you know, interesting, exciting ideas of what to do. So we had, we had a, a date night the other day. And that actually started something because a lot of people started to make inquiries about, you know, how you can decorate your home. Part of it is what you see behind me. I've left it on um, for today. Um, that's a backdrop. And so, you know, so many things that we can do that we were looking into. Also going into, I train, and um, now we're looking to taking it to, um, to, to an online forum where people can actually learn online and, and so many other things. Nice one, Kunle. Thank you so much. Um, and Kunle, you, so you, you said that you've been doing, uh, you, you, you've been uh, decorating people's homes. Uh, how, how, or, We're or, or, working on it. We okay. have started. My first, uh, the first one I'm going to do is in June, uh, first week in June. Yeah. But yeah, carry on. Sorry. Okay. No, no, is exactly. that no? Well, so you said it's the first week in June. I just wanted to find out how that's been going, how you've been, I guess, doing it while staying safe, socially distanced and all that kind of stuff. But I guess we're going to uh, find out in June. But what, what's, what's your plan for that? What's your plan? Well, the plan is for this particular one, the first one, the plan is to go in, get the clients to clear out the place. So it's an empty room. We go in, we put the decor, they want balloons and um, flowers. And then we do that. We try and disinfect the, the place, clean up after ourselves before they come in. And then we've said to them that it will be good for them to give us some time after we're done. We're going to be needing just about two hours to set up. So we, we, we plan to go quite early to do that and then leave the space, you know, empty. You know, we would clean it after ourselves and then, yeah, they can have their, their event, you know, a couple of hours after. So that's the plan. Obviously, we're going to go with our mask. Um, you know, I've been working on masks as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I see that you're, you're, go with you're, very, mask, you're uh, very creative um, gentleman, Kunle. Say that again, sorry. You're a very creative man. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. it's really good. All right. Well, we're going to hear a bit about more, a bit more about that during the session. Mm -hmm. Next, we want to go to Mr. Remy Benson, international wedding photographer and events photographer. I can see your uh, your wife uh, in the comments here to support you as usual, which is very <laughs> nice of her. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing during this time, Remy. And also you have to tell us about this competition that you're launching on Monday. That's a very juicy, juicy bit of news you've got to tell us there. So I think the international part um, of the photography actually comes from just generally traveling. So I think in the last 10 years, I would say I've been to about 60 cities and 35 countries. That's where the international comes from. I've done a few weddings abroad and bits and bob like that. So that's where the, the, the traveling comes from. But during this time, I'm actually, a lot of people actually don't know. A few people know me, know me properly. I'm actually a key worker. Um, so I've actually not been on lockdown actually since it started. So funny enough, when Corona came about, um, I think a week before lockdown, I was actually in Cyprus. It was my wife's birthday. We quickly, it was a, we needed a break and we quickly zoomed out. I got a few funny messages from family members who said, oh, didn't you hear Corona was coming, bits and bobs like that. But we came back right on time. I went straight back to work. So for photography, for me personally, I think I've had about eight to 10 postponement. Um, a few things that has changed for me is I know 2021 is gonna be hectic and chock-a-block. Um, what have I been doing on my spare Saturdays that I've had? I've literally been finishing my backlog of work. Um, a few people who also know me would say my images have actually changed in the last year because I say I've been around since 2013 but um, in that, I think, what, six, seven, year, uh, six, seven years I've been around, I've actually taken like a two-year, um, uh, what's it called, break, because I didn't enjoy photography. I'd say that. Um, I didn't enjoy it because I was um, a bit, uh, uh, what's the word, a bit depressed. So for me, actually, 2020 was like my comeback year. I was super excited. 
I'd, I'd done a new logo, I'd rebranded a new website, but that same energy will go to, you know, bottle it up. And then what I'm also doing is I'm actually assessing stuff month by month. Cause I personally actually think weddings will come back on this side of the year, maybe in the last quarter, the numbers might not be big, but weddings will come back this year. Uh, I feel the, 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 the powers that be, uh, I feel by the end of the year, the vaccine will come out and I feel the large weddings will come back next year. So for me personally, nothing's really changed. Obviously me catching up on work that I needed to have finished, the, the designing people's albums, getting, you know, and then sharpening my skills in the sense that I've been playing around with some images. I've been using my, my newborn. I've been using my sisters who people that actually watch my story. Cause if you actually go on my Instagram, um, I'm not before zoom, before everybody started jumping on Instagram live and all this stuff. If you, I think I worked with a client about four or five years ago who says, Remy, you're coming to shoot one of the uh, most important day of my life. I would actually like to get to know who I'm actually um, inviting to my personal space. And that's why I think about five, six years ago, when I came into the business, if you actually want to get to know me, all you have to do actually do is go on my Instagram, my stories, my uh, highlights. You can literally know, oh, this is what this guy gets up to. This is him. So I've, nothing's changed for me social media wise. Yes, I don't know how to use Zoom, as uh, Dean said. I've not been on Zoom a lot. I think this is my second time on Zoom. I think I used it last night actually to play, play a quiz game with a group of friends. That's about it, just to have a test run. But yeah, for me, normality is, uh, yeah, nothing's really changed, I, I'll say. Okay. Okay, good stuff. All right. What, do you want to say it now or do you want to? So, uh, um, I'm happy to say it now. Um, so, for basically, as a key worker, um, my wife did a, a competition. So, Joseph Q. My wife did a competition um, and she gave me away. Just like you said, she's here supporting me. My wife is actually, a lot of people don't know, she's actually, I'll say she's my manager, my wife, my friend. She's all in one. Yes. Um, so, she gave me away because Tina does ju just ask Tina travel and that's why we jet sail a lot and I came home that day she says oh somebody's won it it was a, a, a couple in uh, Beckhamstead and I said you know what when the lockdown comes around and it was actually an Asian couple so I was very super excited actually because I don't actually shoot a lot of Asian or I don't even shoot any Asian wedding so I was super excited so far as they get dressed I'll be happy to do it and then a friend of mine DJ friend, he now rang me to say, oh, Remy, oh, I saw the competition, yada, yada, yada. It would be nice if we could do something, me and you, to do a giveaway. I said, oh, I, I won't give away a free wedding. That's, that's, that's a, you know, minimum a thousand pounds I'm just giving away to somebody. And obviously, because I'm a key worker, I must have gone to work that day. I'm coming back from work, and I heard a really sad story on the radio. Cut the long story short. They both lost their job. Dad is on a dying bed. The venue won... Um, refund their deposit uh, no they had finished paying and they were going to lose 80 percent of their money and then that got me thinking and then i called them back and i'm like you know if you're happy to do it i'm happy to do it yeah and again my wife then said remy if you're going to do it do it right do a whole wedding and because yes i am in the industry i started literally within three days i think i had about 20 vendors on board who were happy to actually give their time give their money, give their dress, give their suits, their big name brands and their brands that I, some of the, some of the people that I actually put together, people that I've worked with, people I, that I class as mentors and some of their business have been around. I think one of them says she's actually celebrating uh, 10 years next year. And I'm like, whoa, so you've been around before me. So we've now actually packaged a whole wedding for free. I know people have messaged me and DM me, is there a catch to it? There's no catch to it. It's literally send us your story, send us your picture of why you should get a wedding for free. Uh, we got all the vendors to send what they would have charged um, for their services, and it's worth over £30,000 that we're giving away. And that actually excludes a venue and food. So if you add that on top, you could be getting like a £50,000 wedding for free. I tried to get a few caterers to get on board, but there was a complication for hygiene and they don't know what's happening but we're also still actually um looking for venues who will be happy to jump on board but um realizing that uh, venues are actually not open right now so emails are not being replied and stuff like that but i won't be surprised i know cnn actually so we, we actually reached out to cnn cnn would have actually picked up the story and they were happy to run with it but because their market is mainly based in america 
they, they went, you know, because it's the pound sign, it's not the dollar sign, it, we, you know, we can't run the story. But uh, we've got a few, apart from, then we partnered with Bella Niger, but we've also got a few media outlets who are messaging and they've seen how. So we're actually going to do a mini documentary from literally a conversation between two friends. My wife gave me away. First of June, Monday, we actually launched. There's no catch to it. It's all free. There's little, little T's and C's that make sure your wedding is within London, not too far. If you do take us to like where Mary lives, Manchester or outside or Leicester or Coventry, you might have to pay for some certain vendors to come to you. Yes. But apart from that, the dress, the suits, the whole lot is free. I can name drop, but wait till Monday. Go look at the, um, you know, I even called you, Dean, you know, to say, Dean, how are you doing? Do you, do you want to get on board? And, you know, you, you told me why you couldn't do it. And I'm, I'm happy. I, and even Joseph, I've spoken to Joseph already today because he brought, me, he brought something to me. So basically, as I had like a group of 10 vendors in my mind that I just wanted to put together, but whilst I was talking to, even they told me to call uh, Soji Alaya, but if I put Soji on the, on the map, that means it's, oh, it's, a, it's going to be a, a Yoruba wedding or it's going to be a specific wedding. So that's why I thought, no, no, let, let's leave Soji on the side now. But come that time, if it's a Yoruba person that wins, actually, we will call Soji be like, listen, do you want to get on board? So there's a, literally the, the list was growing. As soon as I spoke to the videographer, they said, oh, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? You know, when I spoke to um, Anthony Collection, he says, I, do you have a dress? And then I called the dress list, like to the point where I think last week somebody was saying, what about a ring? And I'm like, no, 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 ring is personal to people. But there's a, uh, the vendor list is 32 people strong. Wow, you're dropping some hot names there, mate. Jackie I James, CA brand, <laughs> uh, memories for you. Like the brands, I'm even scared working with these people but i'm glad i'm working with these people because even one of them said i think this is the first time people don't know how normally we i'd work with um soji maybe this saturday then i'll work with um somebody else next saturday but this is the first time you are actually having out i call them heavyweights in on the same bill on the same wedding for one wedding wow it would be a backbreaker if you were actually paying us money yeah, now this this sounds like a dream event. Like I couldn't get on, involved because I want to try and win it for myself. Is, <laughs> is the, are people from the Elite Vendors Network leadership team allowed to enter? Because I think Laura might be interested as well. Do you know what? It's open to everybody. So what, that's one thing we didn't do. Um, we didn't specify it to be like, oh, it's just for key workers or for nurses. My, my, my stepmom is a nurse. I've got nurses all around me. And... I didn't want to say, do you know what? If it ends up being a nurse, if it ends up being a key worker, but it is open to everybody. So far as your story touches my heart, touches the panels, I've also put a panel together to say if it touches their heart, if they, you know, if they like your story, why you should win it. So if Dean, if you have a genuine story, you know, why not? I can make one up. I'm good at writing and talking. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, now that's good. Yeah. Now go on, go on, go on. One thing I know is um, I've seen your missus your bride-to-be, and Jackie James, who's a bridal, uh, who's designing the bridal outfit, would love to put your wife in her dress. And I won't be surprised Anthony Collection or Anthony London would like to put you in a suit. Because, wow. you, know, you guys merge. Yeah, listen, like, if, 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 if we end up winning, um, I don't, people will say it's unfair, I think. It's, it's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed. It's fixed. It's fixed. People will say it's fixed. No, but thank you so much, Remy, that are, uh, like, Everything you just said there was amazing. I've got some questions to come back to you with okay. you too. Thank you so much. We're getting lots of people saying, well done. This is amazing. Remy, idea on fire. Round of applause. Like, people are really, really, um, you know, really impressed by your initiative. So, well done, Remy. That is a big power move right there. Mary, I'm going to come back to you. Um, and I've got a question because, basically, Remy said something about, you know, if... Uh, if the the client is from Manchester, they're going to have to end up paying a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I know from conversations we've had in the past, you have said to me that, you know, you weren't complaining, but you're saying that it's not really, it's not kind of equal um, for what vendors get in Manchester, like clientele wise, mm -hmm. compared to uh, what we get in London. Obviously London's kind of like the, the hub, like the central, yeah kind of most busiest place right um and but from conversations i've been having recently a lot of vendors feel like you know we've had this conversation a lot about things not being fair 
or there being clicks in the industry and some people getting more attention than others and stuff like that. What would you say to someone who um, might be a little bit unknown or obscure, like how can they give themselves a voice and get themselves attention, especially during this time as well? Okay, so I think for any business, like it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you have a business, to be honest, and if your market is there, you will thrive. I think from a business coach perspective, a lot of times where you think you're not getting attention, because number one, maybe there's some things that's wrong with your setting of a business. So yes, there's this idea that Manchester don't get as much client as people in London. I mean, yes, you can't even compare London with Manchester. Number one, Manchester, they don't like to pay. <laughs> And event planners are not charging cheap as well. So they're, they're you know, negotiating like, look, this job I'm done on event planner, it's not, it's more of me even doing you a favor because at the end of the day, next day, I can't get out of my bed to walk because I've done all day with you. So sometimes the money is not even as great, but then you have people still negotiating with you. And I've had event planners, colleagues, I said, I would go and work in London because we, a lot of people in London are ready to pay. For what they get which is good and again people in london when it comes to professional jobs they, they, their income is a bit higher than other places as well so i'm a business analyst by day as, as a career and i know if you're doing a contract be it around manchester or northwest you probably get maybe 450 or 350 per day but if you're in london you're looking at 500 650 per day and you're doing the same thing <laughs> so there is that but i would say for anyone new in the industry or um obscure you know your voice is not known yet i would always say before you even, like always understand why you're doing it because <laughs> if not if an industry is not an easy industry so you just you probably die along the way if you're not sure if your foundation is not strong if why you're doing it is not there the passion is not there so it's very key the next thing is your marketing game needs to be on point and there's a lot of you know event planners or event vendors out there so you need to make sure you stand out wherever you are you need to be able to bang in on the problem you're solving for people and also i a lot of event i've noticed a lot of event planners or event vendors they 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 focus on target everyone because they believe everyone has events everyone you know wants but the thing is not everyone can afford everyone you know, it back three years ago, if I'd approached Manola events and said, please plan a wedding for me, I probably would not be able to afford her, to be honest. <laughs> and I would move to someone that I can actually afford. They might not be able to do what Manola events can do for me, but I'll be happy with as long as, long as I can afford them. It's okay, whatever they give me. So it's very key to be able to identify who your target audience you know, is. Not everybody can, you know, even if you go to London, does not mean you actually be successful as somebody else in London because you, what you're trying to reach everyone and in the, in, while you're doing that, you reach no one. Because, because you don't have a particular target audience, then you're not able to streamline your services, streamline your value to them. Because it's when you identify your customers, then you're able to know what the problem they have when it comes to event planning or anything to do with event. Then you're able to provide solution with whatever you have. Then that way your message is clear. But when you're just giving out random things nobody we don't even know what you're doing we're not even sure what service you're providing who can gain from you the value you're bringing to the market you need to be different and i've always told my clients as well and take it on but as an event planner that you need to find a niche in your in your industry the industry is massive is huge okay so you're coming into it <laughs> I don't know. So you have to for, create a carve a, a niche for yourself to reduce. So for example, I'll use myself as an example. I'm an event planner and I'm a business coach as well. In my business coach, in the, a, industry is huge for coaches as well, especially for business. But I said, okay, you know what? What I'm going to do, I don't want everybody, I don't want to be competing with everybody. I said, I'm a business coach for startups. And that's not even a niche enough for me. I said, yeah. when we look in our community, the BIM community, we don't have as much coaches. So I said, I'm going deeper. I'm a business coach for BAME startups. So that way, that way, if you look at it, I'm going to own more market share than if I go to say I'm trying to compete with the global business coaches. Yes. So it's very key to create a niche. I started eminent event about five, six years ago. I had to stop for four months. That Mary, what are you bringing to the industry that will make you different? 
everybody's doing event. What is, why are you different? And I realized that every, I researched most, like out of 10 event plans that I know, about eight of them are luxury business uh, event planners. I'm like, so this is not fair. Someone like me that cannot afford a luxury <laughs> event planner, what do I do? Where do I go to? Because some people just want the basic thing, just to want the event to just be organized. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make Eminent a budget affordable event planning company. The way you have Ryanair is a jet. And obviously, if you add other things on, you get charged for it. So to me, I come in the industry as I want to help the mass as well. You know, I want to say, People that have luxury, that's fine, I, honestly, because the job is not easy. But at the same time, I'm not going to kill myself if you're paying me 200 pounds. Actually, I don't charge that, by the way. But if you're going to pay me 200 pounds for a day coordination, you know, <laughs> probably maybe three hours I'll be there and that's it. And I'm gone. So uh, you have the understanding. I will communicate that to you. If it's 10 pounds you want to get for your wedding, I will say this is what you can get for 10 pounds. Are you happy with it or not? Then we'll move forward. So, but I just want to get to the rest of the mass that cannot actually afford the luxury, but they just want the event to be well organized, the basic basically. And that's how I changed. And mm. from that moment I made that decision, honestly, I've been getting more clients than before that time. So I think it's very key. If you're just entering this industry, please, please do not do it because somebody else is doing it and you think that you know doing well. So that's why you want to do it. Please, please identify your target audience create a carve a niche to reduce competition and always drive value. People, you think people don't have money, people have money, but money for value. It's when right. they see the value, they will pay for it. I, I promise you, people, I'm still making money. I mean, pandemic is on. As a business coach, I'm still making money. It's what people deem necessity and parity, but it's up to you to make sure you drive that necessity in their head because they don't know they need it, but you have to show them that you actually need it and they will pay you. I can see that you are a lady about your coin. You <laughs> do not play. You are about your money. Yes. But it's, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm actually quite surprised that there's, obviously I know uh, Manchester's not as big and affluent as London, but I would have thought that as Manchester is, and Birmingham are like the, the next two biggest cities mm -hmm. to London, that there would be a lot more bigger weddings happening up there and a lot more clients willing to pay. No. <laughs> No. Again, like I said before, there might be a link between the, the income as well. So the income play, so like if I'm getting a minimum, less, I'm getting like one five a month, for example. Now, if I want to do events, people don't even see, I don't think people don't see event planners as necessity compared to when they have a caterer or decorator. I'm like, girl, please, if you don't have an event planner or event coordinator at least, yeah, that decorator, if they mess up that six, you're not going to be running from your center stage and say, I want to go and sort out catering because people have been poisoned. You know, I think some event plan is to drive home the core value, show yeah. people the problem that you're trying to solve. But at the, most, most time we don't do that. Yeah. So people don't know what they're paying for. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so I think until you, you highlight the problem and tell them what you can do to solve that issue for them, you know, I think it will work. And again, yeah. So that, that's what I think as well. Yes, thank you. Love your energy, Mary. Really <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next, Soji. Mary, Mary just spoke about um, having a niche, yeah. and obviously, what you do is is quite niche. Obviously, there's 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 lots of Nigerian bands uh, and uh, stuff, but you know, there's not like they're not as common as say DJs, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. and now we've gone online. You've given yourself even more of a niche because I'm sure there's not many other live bands out there that are going to be able to move online the way that you have like this is what you said that you've done like set up a studio make the sound quality just as good as it was in person it's like really quite ingenious stuff like when when how did you work out what to do so quickly and obviously you you you, you are a leader of about you know, eight to 10 people in your band? Like, was it difficult trying to give them reassurance? There were lots of people asking you questions and saying like, you know, boss, what's going to happen now? Mm -hmm. And what, what, what did you say to them? Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, also, well done to Mary. Um, I would like to say people don't buy what you do. People buy why you do it. Um, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of musicians, entertainers out there. And the, uh, I think Mary mentioned something, I wrote it down, it said, your ability to 
market your um, the marketing game, your ability to market yourself properly to people is what people buy, really. And one thing I, I, I believe and I know what I, I do most to just put myself out there or to propel myself in the ind industry is quality. I noticed that a lot of live bands, you know, at events here in London, the sound quality is not always on point. You know, um, sometimes some of them get led to events or probably one thing or the other, or they don't work well with other vendors and things like that. I mean, I came, I, I, just, I, I just thought, you know what, what can I do different to make my market bigger and also to captivate other audience? So some, these are some of the things that I've done when event was going live at, 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 at venues and all that. But presently, um, with, my, with my band members, it, it was a tough, it was a tough decision initially. It was a tough thing to go, get into. Um, wrapping my head around the old coronavirus, because, you know, the very first, I think, uh, the whole of uh, the month of March, between March 21st and like two weeks after, I, I had symptoms of COVID-19 and myself and my band, band guys, we just thought initially at the beginning when the old, the old lockdown started, we thought, you know what, people are at home, people are depressed, we don't know what next, we don't know how long this is going to go for. What can we do? I just said, you know, let's go to the studio and just do something and do Instagram live or Facebook live just to bring smiles to people's faces and all that. And we did that. Um, but unfortunately, af after that performance, almost about four or five of us, we fell ill and we had to self-isolate, treat ourselves. Everybody got better. And I said, you know what, for the next one month, we're not going to do nothing. Let's just chill. All I do is just call them, check on them. How you guys doing food-wise, income? What do you have? What can you do? Are you okay? Sometimes I, I try to just, you know, I, I call them regularly, message them just to make sure that, okay, mentally they are all right. Uh, financially, everybody's good. You can, you can take care of yourself. So when I sat down, I, I, I thought about, okay, what next? What next? If this is the new norm, whereby we have to do everything online, I saw, um, I think there was a wedding that, took, that Bola said she did, and she had to go to the, to the client's house, do a bit of decoration, and every other person was online. So I thought, what can we do? So I brought up, um, I, I spoke to one of my guys. Uh, my wife is one of, she's, she's an executive in my, in my company, and she's, she's, a, she's one of the key brains behind what I do. So we sat down and we talked about it, that, you know what, we can actually service more people from our, either our living room or from our studio, we can service more people worldwide. Um, I sat down, checked the Zoom platform, and I realized that there's an issue with, you know, um, playing sound via Zoom globally. So because it's designed for, um, um, for speech. So we did a couple of trial and error here and there. I'm very particular about quality sound. It is very important for me. It's something that I don't joke with. I'm very particular about quality sound. I know this. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, before the meeting, uh, before the briefing we did at one o'clock, I, I, I was on the phone for about uh, one and a half hours trying to sort out a DJ in Nigeria. He's, he's meant to be part of tonight's um, 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 40th birthday party and their sound is terrible. So I had to log on, you know, put them through a, a lot of stuff and just to get their, their, their sound right. So this is one of the key things that puts me out there. Quality sound, ability to negotiate, ability to, you know, market yourself properly and, you know, keeping it not too expensive in terms of cost for yourself because you have to be careful even at this time, even with the fact that you are trying to go for quality. I mean, uh, you have to just get things properly. And I spoke to my guys that, okay, this is what we have on board. And this is going to be the next, you know, the new norm. The prices that I, I do pay them before, I might not be able to pay such now because of what we'll be getting. But let's start with something. Let's package something together. Let's show the world that, you know what, even with the lockdown, we can still entertain you. We can service you. We can make you happy. We can, you know, you know give your event uh, um, that, that um, um, vibe that you want. And we've been able to do that. We've been having, you know, clients calling and asking questions here and there. We're planning to do a major video recording for tonight's one and putting it on social media. Also, like trying to.
to other people so that they can know that you know what even after lockdown this is going to be is we are we are going to include this um into our services you know we are um at the moment as well i'm, I'm also doing trying to rebrand my my company rebrand synergy production with the management company for soji ally and the synergy band you know doing a website including virtual performances you know this is going to be part of you know the, the new thing going forward um when we are not even on stage we can decide to do a facebook live party we can decide to do an you know instagram live party and i can guarantee you that people worldwide someone will be will be interested in what you are doing they will plug in and they will be ready to spend their money on you okay now thank you soji and quickly just before you go talking yeah. about money because you know <laughs> mary spoke about money i'm going to ask kunli about money next money is a very important thing yeah and as 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 a as a nigerian band one of the things that gets you the most excited is the spraying is people yeah. get spraying you giving you the money i remember when i i've dj'd alongside you a few times i remember i was trying to get sprayed and no one gave me anything <laughs> and i was trying to do my best to get their attention and they didn't give me a, a one dollar but mm. for you you get hundreds of dollars when you perform live in yeah front of a, a, a live audience i know you said that you put your details on the zoom but can you ever really replace that money online you you'll, you'll never be able to get the same amount how, okay. like how, how 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 do you feel about that so initially while when things are still okay when we go to events um i charge the price i charge i i i charge a reasonable amount that whether they spray money or not i'm okay to pay my guys for me, my That's price might good. be a lot more than some live band or most of the live bands, just because of what I, the value I put on myself. I don't want to go to an event thinking, oh, okay, the next thing I need to focus on is the spring. It's not a do or die affair for me. It encourages us. It gives us that extra vibes, extra ginger. That, okay, apart from the money I'm going to pay my instrumentalist, they're still going to get a top up to go with, and I will have something as well. Um, I charge a good a good amount that that sorts out my expenses generally. So on the um, virtual performances now, you'll be shocked that there are actually more people that are transferring money into accounts that we provided just wow. to get their names called. It's just a crazy thing. It's it's a it's a culture for we Africans, especially Nigerian. Once you if I start calling Dean, I don't know, you know, you might not, it might not get to you like that, but there's a way I will praise you yes. that you will feel, oh, wow, I feel special. Yes. There's a particular song I can sing that will probably be speaking to your present situation and you, and you feel connected to me yes. and you just want to appreciate me for what I do. You know, so um, from what we've done in the last um, couple of weeks, I can guarantee you that nothing has changed. I can even tell you that it's even getting better wow you know people once they are able to you know they enjoy what you do and you you can you can satisfy them well they will they will not hold back spending their money on you because wow. there's something you are doing at that time in this particular season i think music is actually an avenue to to ease off depression to ease off the old stress of old covid 19 going on or pandemic lockdown and all that so ability for someone to sit in their own um, small corner and satisfy you know people all over the world it's, it's a unique thing and people value it and people pay for that value yes can all of us on this zoom call come and join you at your party to, with your party <laughs> your zoom party tonight you said you got 150 people do you want around 50 to 100 more um it's a private one it's that's dependent on, on the on the on the host i don't bring externals to people's party if they leave it open and they ask, they say yes this is something that I, I i don't do even live event i don't invite other people to you know live parties you know except yeah. the client said oh yeah it's open to everybody yeah you know, i have to just you know respect that <laughs> okay but you can send me the link privately anyway yes. <laughs> thank you sir i appreciate anyway, that videos after <laughs> yes all right, Kunli. So, sir, I know you've been waiting patiently there and your lovely wife um, wanted to let me know that she is also here supporting you too. Yes, yes, yes. Many thanks to all the wives behind um, in the background. Uh, exactly. Remy's, Remy's wife too. 
you know, has been helping. So thank God for beautiful, wonderful wives. Yes, yeah. indeed. So, and uh, her name is Bumi. You got married in 2018, right? Yes, yes, we did. August, yeah. so it's going to two years in August. Okay, okay. Well, uh, happy anniversary in advance. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So we're going to, we, we need to talk about money because obviously going forward, we are going to have um, less people at events. I know you've seen that video from, uh, her name escapes me, Rita Diosa. Uh, Rita from Diosa Catering sent me the video mm. uh, about the event planner that made a video about how events are going to take place in Nigeria mm. and probably end up uh, taking place here too. Socially distant, people wearing masks, people making sure that they uh, sanitize themselves, etc. Um, in terms of your prices for 2021 and 2022 um, going, and going forward, like, are your prices going to have to change to reflect all of these new rules and regulations? Uh, we had a question from Lisa Black, uh, basically asking a similar thing. Like, what, what are you thinking pricing-wise for next year and the year after? Well, at, at, at the moment, you know, nothing has changed in terms of pricing. But we know and we can, we can foretell that some of these things are going to change. So if, for example... I'm going to have to provide a disinfecting service alongside decorating and planning. That would have to be paid for. Um, if, if you know, um, transport is going to cost me a bit more um, because, I mean, sometimes you have to get extra drivers, extra vans to take you to the destination. And if they're adding to their cost, so obviously all of that will go onto the client. So yes, definitely. Um, it all depends on what happens. We don't want to say for sure so that our clients are not scared away. But it looks, you know, it looks like definitely um, a lot of things are going to be, you know, added on. Certification, for example, if we're required to go for further certification to be able to work in some places, obviously, definitely, we, that would increase price. So, um, but, you know, nothing is set in stone. We'll wait and see. Thank you, Kunli. So I know you've seen the video. Uh, the, the, the plan is actually uh, Kenny Olayinka from PK Lamor. Yeah. Yes, you know, you know about it, right? I do. So I what, do. What, 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 what do you think of some of the things that you've seen in that video? What's, what's your thoughts on it? Well, to be honest, um, some of the things she, she, she said or she highlighted are needed. My only worry and query is, you know, the, the, the issue of, of, of crowd, how they're going to be able to, you know, effect all of those things with a crowd. Because she was going, she was talking about um, an event of 300 and above. And I think in the immediate future of, you know, events, you know, after lockdown and all of that, I think social distancing is still going to be a thing. Most of the venues, are talking about reducing the number of guests on tables and even in halls and making half the guests virtual events and stuff like that. So nobody really would be willing to, to accommodate a large crowd. That's my only worry. And then the, the aspect of the ambulance outside and all of that, I'm not so sure about, you know, what it was the ambulance for, you know, or who are they treating? Are they going to be treating yeah, people with, you know, who are suffering from COVID? I mean, so many things, but the, the whole idea, I think it creates awareness that, you know, things would change and measures have to be, you know, put in place. So, um, yeah, it's a good video, promotional video to create awareness, but, you know, some of the things, um, and, and also, sorry to, if I'm talking too much, no, also, no, no. a lot of people back in Nigeria have come out to say, well, they, they've more or less dissociated themselves from the video saying that, you know, um, they're not sure of the authority she has and all of that. Um, be that as it may, I think it's a good awareness video for people to be aware so that when these things do come into place, it won't be strange. Also, I've heard of an event which took place yesterday in Nigeria. Even though it was a small gathering, it was a funeral, but most of these things were, were present there. So there were sanitizers spotted around, there were wash hand bases spotted around, they were checking people's temperature. Some of these things have already come into play. So, you know, she's not too far from the truth. It's just, you know, a bit more of the things that I thought, mm, this might not work. Yeah, I thought it was quite an ingenious video, especially because they went to the efforts to actually 
act it all out. Yeah. I thought it was very clever. Absolutely. But I was just like, there's no way really that you can realistically social distance at an event. Like yesterday, I was around the most people I've, I've been around for weeks. I was in Asda and they've stopped like uh, controlling how many people go in and out. And there was just people everywhere, everywhere. Like there was like people in all the aisles, um, mm. by the tills, it was just ridiculous. And I just felt like there's no way I'm going to get out of here without the coronavirus. In <laughs> fact, I'm going to self-isolate. I'm, I'm quarantining myself for two weeks from now, just in case, because it was crazy. Mm. Like, how are we actually going to be able to, like, realistically do, like, our kind of events so, um, social distance? Like, it's, 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 do you think it's really possible? African <laughs> parties, Caribbean possible parties is it possible it is possible and the reason why i think it's possible is because people are scared let's not kid ourselves this thing is real no matter what you think people are dying and so because of that i mean if you invite me to a party now i would want to be sure that all measures have been taken so it is possible to social distance the only thing is people are thinking would would it then be cheaper if i'm having a smaller event and I've said to people that not necessarily so, because you're still going to have the same big hall, just that you now have to have less people um, so that you can actually have social distancing. Um, you're still going to have probably the, almost the same number of tables, just less people sitting on it. So, you know, it, it, it's workable, basically. I feel it's workable, especially, you know, in the Caribbean and the African you know, community. It's going to be difficult but I think it's workable. I can see Remy shaking his head in disapproval there. Definitely want to hear what you've got to say. And for, ev for everyone on the, uh, on the session today, just want to let you know, this is a slightly different setup. So some people, your messages are only going to the panelists. If you want your panelists, so if you want your message to go to everyone, you have to select all panelists and attendees for everyone to be able to see what you're saying. Just want to let you know that, yeah? So mm -hmm. Remy, do you think it's possible for us to have events after this time, socially distant? And for you as a photographer, how are we going to really get the best pictures if people aren't allowed on the dance floor, if the bridesmaids and groomsmen can't be even close to the couple? Like, isn't this, this just absolutely ridiculous? Should we just stick to Zoom? Or <laughs> should we give up <laughs> before we try? Nah, uh, personally, um... I actually watch a lot of news. I think I watch too much news. Um, I don't do a lot of reading. I watch a lot of documentaries. And if you trace it back to the Spanish flu, humanity, we human beings, we adapted, we changed, vaccine came, came out, we moved on from it. And obviously pandemics or whatever they want to term it to be, we moved on from it. Even if you look at, um, I think I was in Nigeria at that time when 11 happened, and a lot of people died. If you check the airports that time, if people can remember, metal detectors at the airports, you could only, maybe, maybe if you go to a fancy airport, would you have got a metal detector or, or them taking off your shoes, your, your, your belt and stuff like that. They adapted, we changed. Because that time when 9-11 happened, it was, oh, we're going to bring this into the airport, we're going to do that. And obviously the airline people and um, we passengers were shouting, oh, I'm going to be sitting at the airport for three, six hours, and oh, it's impossible, it's this, it's that. There's some of the things, obviously, on that video, it's totally impossible. Aesthetic-wise, or picture-wise, too, um, I can't be shooting people with masks on their face. It's, it's, it's impossible, you know? So that's why I said, uh, I personally think this side of the year, this, and this is my personal opinion, so people don't get me wrong, I, I don't know anybody in the government, is... The weddings might be small, the parties might be small, but as soon as Soji Alayo gets on the mic and he's singing and he's chanting people's name, you're telling me you're going to tell people to stay two meters away from each other. It's impossible. There's no how. So that's why maybe that... I'm going to try and get close and catch my blessings as well and catch some dollars. You feel me? There's no how where <laughs> maybe the numbers might be less, and that's my advice for whoever is watching on this or whoever is planning it. Numbers should be less. You might send out your virtual invite or your physical invites just to make sure, listen, make sure you don't have a temperature and all this wash your hand. And it's, I, I actually, when all this started, that's why I didn't personally take it serious till like maybe April. 
because it's just hygiene. I don't know why you don't wash your hand for 20 seconds in the first place. I don't know why you don't do certain level of cleanliness in the first place. They have to start getting celebrities or doing adverts and spending millions of pounds on telling people how to wash their hands and do it. You should know how to do that in the first place. You might get to venues these days and there might be, so there's a, if you watch uh, CNN yesterday, there's a Japanese guy that's kind of come up with a new, it's like um, the metal detectors where it literally scans you in less than five seconds for your temperature. So they might, there might be venues where uh, the grand venues, they might put that at the doors. If you have a temperature, why were you there in the first place? That's a question. Why, why are you going to the party in the first place? If you think you're not feeling too good. So for, as a photographer, genuinely on the side of the year. And then I always say the powers of because I, I believe in the God almighty. And then there's after him, I also feel there's a group of people who make this money, you know, who supply some of us, our equipment, who own these hotels, who owns these venues, who supply the food, who owns this farm. The powers that be, I've probably sat down somewhere and thought, is either we get people back out to, if you listen to Radio 5 yesterday, if this continues, this lockdown continues, the recession we had in 2008, people thought it was bad. People lost their houses. People lost all sorts. I knew a few people that had that time. If this continues, the recovery process is going to be 10 times worse. Yeah. So that's why personally, they've gradually started shoving people out. And if you, if you, look, if you look at the news and watch the TV, there's a lot of people actually that don't want to go back to work. Yes. And their, their bosses are having to tell them, oh, I'm going to stop your fellowing. I'm going to do this. And this is a time where uh, a lot of people are saying, I've got grandmas at home. I've got a baby at home. I'm not too sure. Listen, humanity, society, and the, the world we live in, I bet a year from now, if you do another web Zoom, we would have moved away from this. 9-11 happened, I think, three, four months down the line. People were, Even when the London bombing happened, the first two, three days, people were very scared of getting under the underground. But we get used to things that where as soon as the party starts again, that's 50 to 100 guests wedding, then it takes for someone to, you know, to, to, to build up the guts to be like, you know, I'm have a 300 party. There are a few little bits and bobs that you might have to do. Yes, the temperature check. You might have to uh, temperature check. You might have to just do a couple of things. Um, have um, the wash and basin. You might have a, a cleaner maybe every hour whilst the party is happening. You know, make sure you're cleaning the toilet. Maybe, maybe somebody wiping the handles down. But the parties will return. There's no how. That's my personal opinion. And I think not on this side of the year, especially when I say the parties, the big parties will come back from January onwards. The last quarter of the year, when I say the last quarter, the last four months of the year, I feel it's going to be small, niche, less than 100 guests, parties, which it might save a few people money. It might not, because obviously we all charge differently. For me as a photographer, I already stay two meters away from people. You know, <laughs> it's only, I, I genuinely, for us, the photographers, uh, videographers, uh, the deco actually, even um, the live band people, he, you know, so GLIO can actually put like a, a what's it called? A tape around him That's that don't deep. come near me. There's only a few people that actually go next to the guests. It's actually guests and guests that actually really interact with each other. When you look at most weddings, Wedding planners, you know, you're, you're, apart from talking to the, the bride and groom, you know, you're not really interacting with guests that much. So for me, two meters away, I'm already, there's somebody that actually rang me two weeks ago and said, oh, can we still do the pre wed shoot like we planned at the end of June? And I'm like, yeah, so far as, you know, we'll still do a bit of social distancing, but I'm already two meters away from, I can shoot you from 400 meters because the lens, depending on what lens you're using, I, I'm, I can stay clear away from you. So my personal opinion is on this side of the year, the events will be small, niche, which I, I enjoy, small weddings, and then the big weddings will return next year with a few health and safety, with a few cleanliness. That's about it. And your, your free wedding, the one you're giving away, the competition, when are you, what, what month or year are you planning for that to be? So because of um, the, the, the vendors I put together, I thought it was going to be a small um, group of people, but it's actually 32 strong. Um, we, when I spoke to all of them, everybody is hoping it's an off-peak period wedding. So like a, a December to an April wedding within that, that month. Or if you don't get married within that month, you flip it again to the last quarter of the year when us vendors are not busy. And preferably, 99% of the vendors 
signed on, don't want a Friday, uh, Saturday wedding. So you can have a Sunday to a Friday wedding. Everybody signed up. And funny enough, um, talking about that, there's actually a surprise that comes after the wedding. You know, there's a, there's a huge surprise that comes after. It was actually supplied by Lux by B, Balanle, who's my wife's uh, sister. She's gone around and she's actually brought something that is actually bigger than the wedding. So I'll let people, you know, think about it. What's bigger than your wedding? And then you can add it together. If that's like a, if that's like a 30 day Caribbean cruise or <laughs> all expenses paid trip to the Maldives or something, I am definitely entering. Even if people say the EVN is corrupt, I'm entering and I'm winning. Corrupt. Yeah. So that's another thing that a lot of people have been talking about that. Um, with how do we make it transparent? How do we make sure that, oh, I don't, I don't know the person that, and funny enough, we've come round and with a few minds that, that's why I'm, I'm glad with the team that I put together, we're going to make it as transparent as possible. There's going to be recordings. I'm not going to, literally, we're going to make sure when we pick the winner, you know, Kunix is not going to call me that, Remy, pff, I'm not too sure, or Remy, you cheated, or Soji might say, or Mary might say, or, oh, I heard this person, you've worked with her before. No, no, no. It's going to be as transparent as possible. We're going to have recordings and stuff like that and documentaries to actually show people there's no, you know, because we in Nigeria sometimes have that Yeah, yeah, it's going to be transparent. <laughs> yes, okay. Now, this is really interesting. We must move on, Remy. But now, this, uh, everything you said there was great. Um, uh, Kole says it must be a honeymoon or deposit for a house. And there's been some funny comments, actually. Someone said that we should put Perspex... Yinka um, Oye says we should put Perspex screens around the celebrants um, <laughs> to allow social distancing. I've seen uh, a few of the pictures with uh, bride and grooms with uh, mask on. Mom, you know yeah. what? On that wedding day, it would be nice for just that picture for them to have it on and just remember Corona. But yeah. apart from that, editing-wise for me, it just makes it difficult. And then you're now editing about three, four, five hundred people with masks on their face. It's, it's nah. Exactly. And nah. Laura was clapping when you said people should know how to wash their hands. And she says, Amen, Remy. They so, should. guys, believe it or not, like we are already an hour and 20 minutes into this session. So, we've only got about 10 minutes to go. So, that Whoa. means that, like, yeah, it, 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 it took a while to go around today. Um, got some very vocal people on this session of course um but no no i don't mean that in any bad way it's a good it's a good thing um so next i'm gonna i'm gonna go in the same order so mary soji kunle remy just your final thoughts for this session for everyone that's tuning in today and everyone that will watch it after what do you want to what message would you would you like to leave everyone with today yeah. Thanks, Din. And once again, thanks for all this and all the food I've spoken. What I just want to leave with everyone is please, 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 this will come and go. These two shall pass, okay? Take it at a time. I saw a post yesterday and said, you know, why everybody's rushing for this pandemic to be over, over and return to normal, whatever that is, take time to identify what not to return to things that this pandemic has showed us as a business, as, you know, business owners, as individuals, personal lives that, you know, like, for example, when we return after this whole craziness, one thing is I would now spend more time with my family because before I didn't have that time. My kids, because I have two young children and now I'm kind of forced to spend time with them, but I'm loving it. And I love the fact that I can create time for them and quit for my husband. I have an opening and closing time that I don't accept calls. Probably that's why Joseph did not get through to me yesterday. <laughs> so, and I, you know, so, so I'm not gonna go back to my crazy working pattern anymore because I've seen the importance of me spending time with my family. And of, it comes to your business as well. Some things I've put together as a business owner in my business that I know that this pandemic has showed, showcased my bad habits, if I should call it that way. And I'm not gonna go back to them anymore. So please, don't just wait for this time to pass. What can you do? How can you grow during this time? Be it personal, be it in your business, be it in your career, you know, just do something, you know, that your, your tomorrow will thank you for. I'm not saying pressure yourself into what you don't want to do because I've seen a lot of things going around. If only, if all you can do is rest, rest, that's all you need. Don't be pressured. <laughs> okay. But don't come for me when next I drive a new Porsche 
you know, the same year, because I've worked for it during a pandemic. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying, but I'm just saying this, do something productive for yourself. Do you, you know, what if you have to sleep, like people say sleep, you know? And um, so just open God that things will go better. I, I believe things will go better and just keep doing you. Take it day at a time. You know, don't rush. Don't pressure yourself. This too shall pass. If you need help, reach out to people. Don't be alone. When all of us are in this and we're looking to support everyone, regardless, you don't have to pay me all the time. You know, I'm, I'm lending a hand, friendship hands. Let's look out for each other. Okay, I've lost two people in the space of six weeks between all these things. And I'm, I'm so grateful for people that have surrounded me with their love and support. So don't feel like you're alone and I self-isolate because of COVID-19. We can still talk on the phone. We can still Zoom, you know, just to check on each other, pray for each other. And, you know, let's just be there for each other. And these two shall pass. This too shall pass. You got a very yeah. infectious personality, Mary, and I can see exactly yeah. why your business coach and we wish you all the best and we wish you the most success and we hope you get that Porsche sooner than you think it sooner than you think yes thank you I received that thank you <laughs> okay Soji you sir you next all right um thank you guys for having me on board today um this this period has actually given me the opportunity to look at look into other businesses apart from music, uh, it has given me the opportunity to want to learn more, to network, to, I mean, with people. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful for, you know, I mean, it's not, I, I didn't pray for lockdown, but the lockdown has actually helped me to, to um, ed educate myself more and also get to know more people, build relationship more with my wife, get to know my two sons, you know, reach out to family and friends, especially in this period. And, and I think it's just the right thing to do. Also, um, um, it has helped me to look for, to check my business and, and develop a new strategy. Um, presently, my main um, website is down because we are rebranding and building a new one and all that. So it has given me room to do something better that will actually pay off on, in, you know, on the long run. So I'm, I'm really I mean, grateful to God for that. Also, my spiritual life, uh, as it, I've been able to dedicate more time to God, do a lot of things. So this season, despite the, the odds, I, I think it has given me the room to be myself, to, to learn a lot of things, also to build relationships. I, I don't think anybody should pressure themselves, just like Mary said, a lot of things out, I mean, on, on, on social media says, I feel like, oh, if you, if you don't come out of this COVID-19, whatever, whatever, better, you know, I don't think that should be the norm. Just do yourself. Just be you. Show someone some love out there. Um, improve if you need to improve. Sleep if you need to sleep. Watch Netflix if you need to watch net, net, Netflix. It's, um, you know, nobody should de decide what you want to do for yourself right now. Do whatever is, is suitable for you. And I know that very soon this will pass. I will get back to, you know, a better new normal. It's not going to go back to the same old normal, a better new normal. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you very much, Soji. And uh, your, your, your posts are actually very inspiring when you post about your wife and your twins. And you get every picture gets like 500 likes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like, it's very inspiring that you're such a very well-rounded person, family man, spiritual man, entertainer, entrepreneur. And yeah, we're really glad that we had you on today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, and to our final two speakers whose wives are both here to support them. Let's see whose wife can be the most supportive and put the most comments in, <laughs> in the chat. We first, let's go for Kunle and then Remy, please. Right. Um, my final words would be, um, take it easy. Um, I think this whole thing is a way of God putting a pause on, on the whole world for everybody to just chill and relax. You know, so just take your time, chill, relax, um, be positive in all that you do, knowing that, you know, the plan for God or God's plan is to bring us to an expected end. And so at the end of the day, I know that people have died, you know, and, you know, this has affected people negatively. But, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. 
Um, also, I would like to say that, you know, in as much as we all want to make profit, but money is not the only profit in life. You know, sometimes you do jobs, you don't make so much money, but you make more connections, you know, so don't focus too much on money. Focus on growing your business, you know, forming relationships. And like all the other panelists have said, relationships are important. It's one of the things that kept us going in this, you know, pandemic. Build your relationship with God. I've tried to do that. And one of the first things I did was to go back to Revelations and read Revelation so that I would have a better understanding of what's going on. You know, reach out to your partners, you know, form better relationships with people. Um, yeah, and think outside the box. You know, don't restrict yourself to what you're doing. Um, try and learn new, new, new skills, new talent. And, you know, always stay positive. It's always the best way to go. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well said, Kunle, says Tolo Phillips. Um, Joseph says, Amen. Harriet says, Amen. And a few others. Now, very, very well done. Very good words. I see you're, you're, you're reading Revelations there, meaning that you must think these are the final days. <laughs> well, yes, indeed. It, uh, you know, these things are already, you know, written out in the Bible. Uh, these things will happen, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's just life as it is. Um, so if you know these things, you wouldn't fret, you wouldn't worry, you'll just stay alert. And one, one other thing I should say is that, you know, we should be aware. We should, you know, knowledge is key. We need to get knowledge. We need to have an understanding, not just in the spiritual way, even around us, you know, get knowledge about the new laws that will come out. Because I can assure you that laws will come out, you know. That, that would affect the event industry. So we need to be aware and, you know, God help us. Amen to that. Thank you. Thank you, Kunle. Now, final words from Mr. Remy Benson. Please, what would you like to say to everyone today? Picking up from where um, Kunix just said, um, I think from, for me, COVID-19, I was on a, how should I say, a fact-finding spiritual journey before it happened. So for me, actually, this has helped me because um, in November, I actually had a, I had a baby and I actually almost lost my wife and child. They were in a, both in a coma and, you know, but we recovered. Wow. And during that time, I, my, my wife would joke, she's obviously on here. I always tell her I'm one foot in, one foot out because I go to church and at the same time, I actually go out to the bars and I drink. So people would call me one foot one, one, you know, which that's the way I live my life. But over that period in November, you know, spending a month in the hospital, having the right family members and friends around me to bring me through it. And then COVID-19 happened. I have faith. I have faith that this will come and it will go, you know. So for me, spiritually, you know, and then because I'm a key worker too, I've seen it, you hear about it, but it's not touched me, I'd say. I'm, you know, you, when you go surfing, I'm, I'm riding the wave, I'm riding high. And then I, one advice I'd give people is during this time, more COVID-19 will come. So this is a start of, uh, it's a warning, I'd say, if you, like, if you read Revelation. It's a warning where two, three years from now, there might be COVID-23 or 24. How do you survive? How do you keep paying your bills? How do you stop multi streams of income? You must, you know, the nine to five, because I, I, juggle two or three jobs actually you must make sure if one is stopped you know the, the the two or three others can provide you income you know the regular nine to five couple of years ago i think the them days are over but for us you know having a few jobs or having a few businesses would make sense and i'm hoping a few people take this you know when people say normality will return i'm hoping you're at home in the past month or two you've looked at yourself in the mirror You've picked up a hobby, just like uh, Koenig said, he's sewing now, he's a tailor, you know. Um, um, so so G's, um, you know, going viral on, on Instagram and live. Mary's, you know, she's a, it's, you must have looked to yourself. L listen to Michael Jackson. Look at yourself in the mirror, assess yourself and how, I'm not saying don't chill, don't watch Netflix. The spare Saturdays I've had, and, you know, we've come up with Win My Wedding. By the same time, I'm looking at other things in my head. What more can I do? Because I know people say normality will come back. I don't want to return to normality. I want when businesses and the world returns to normal, I want to be a step ahead and make sure I'm ready for the next wave because the rich are still getting 
richer. The poor are still getting poor. So the world, yes, will come back to normal, but you want to make sure when you're returning, you come back as a whole person and you're ready for the next challenge. You're ready for the next hustle. And that's the way I look at it. Amazing. Thank you so much, Remy. And as um, Joseph and Laura have already done, they've already put all of our speakers' social media handles in the chat. Um, as Remy said earlier, guys, I think you guys should really connect with him. Like he, his, his whole life, well, a lot of his life is on his Instagram. If you want to get to know him more, he does um, logistics. Well, he's, you know, his nine to five is like driving and logistics. He's a photographer. He also does trading. I work for the largest um, bread maker in the UK. I work for Kingsmill. Yes. So yes. I've actually been to Stoke already this morning and I've been back already. Exactly. The guy works throughout the night. He will respond to you around the clock. And um, he, he also um, does trading on the stock market from what I know and several things, you know. So if you want some tips on business, photography, events, family, whatever. Can I say something? The guy, yeah. Can I say something? Go for it. My advice for anybody in this live chat is this is the best time. If you've had money saved up, house prices are going to tank. They're going to tank. This is the best time. It's going to be hard. It's easier said than done. But this is one of the best times to actually jump. If anybody here doesn't, is not a homeowner or a landlord, this is the best time to actually reinvest. Get, you know, do it now. Because I remember in 2008, that's the first time I actually got on a uh, property ladder. People thought I was crazy, but obviously it's doubled in price now. But I'd say, yes, please do. Don't go and borrow. But make sure this time around you can, you know, get on because obviously we, they call us, um, I hate when they term us as um, ethnic minorities, you know. So I feel personally this is one of the best times to actually get, you know, invest in housing. Yes. Thank you so much, Remy, and the rest of our speakers. Thank you. Clap, 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 everyone. I remember that Remy's giving away a wedding as well, which we're going to, we, we, we'll, we'll post it on our social media after this. So, guys, just a few announcements before everyone goes. Please follow us, the Elite Vendors Network, on social media, on Instagram. Our Facebook page is, um, is getting sorted now, too. Our website's getting sorted. Things are happening. We've been working in the background, as well as doing these sessions. And we've done nine of them now, nine sessions. We're going to be doing our final one next week for this season or for this period. We may continue them again in the future, but we're going to leave it on number 10. So next week, we've got a really special session planned um, and we're going to have a larger panel and it's going to be slightly longer and you definitely don't want to miss it as well. Yeah, so it's definitely worth coming on next Saturday, same time, 2 p.m. It's going to be our final one for this period, as I said, and then we may come back in a few weeks or few months we'll we'll, we'll 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 see what happens yeah as we this is live happening right now this session and the, and the pandemic is happening live right there out in the world so we're just trying to figure things out as it as, as we go along this wednesday we have a games night for the elite vendors network it's mainly for our members but everyone that's on this session we we, we will invite you to it we're not going to be uh, stingy like soji and we're going to let you come to our session. <laughs> and we're going to let everyone be involved. Yeah, so this Wednesday night, 8 p.m. on Zoom. Um, if you want that, uh, we'll put, actually, we'll put the link in this chat quickly before we finish. And it's going to be a question and answer quiz night. And you need two devices. So, like, your laptop will be, uh, will be will, will, will display the question. And then, like, you kind of vote or choose the answer on your phone or tablet, et cetera. So you um, need two devices, like tablet, phone, or laptop, phone, or laptop, tablet, et cetera. And it's going to be a really fun night. Come and join us doing something a bit different. As I said, we're back here next Saturday at 2 p.m. And um, that's going to be our final EVN goes live for now. But guys, thank you all of you so, 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 so much. Uh, Mary, Kunle, Remy, Soji, it has been a great, great session. I think you've inspired and uplifted us all. You've all had some amazing things to say. And I just want to thank you for your time because you could be anywhere in the world right now. No. But you're here with you us. You couldn't be anywhere but home. <laughs> <laughs> home. Stay home. 
<laughs> exactly. All right, listen, Laura or um, Joseph, can we get the link for the games night, if you can, into the chat? And um, all the speakers, we're going to have our separate chat shortly, but everyone else that attended today, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, here's the details for Rem Remy's competition as well. You can follow uh, Win it's My... It's a giveaway. It's a giveaway. We're giving away. So the giveaway, the giveaway, the yes, wedding. It's a giveaway. You, do, you, you might as well say more about it before you go actually go for it. Just like, well, how can people um, find out more, how can they enter, etc. Um, there's a website launching on Monday, so we actually officially launch on Monday. So you would actually get to meet the 32 vendors on the website. Um, all you have to do is literally tell me why you should win your wedding, send us a picture, send me your story. And then obviously we get to read, you know, your story. Obviously we would filter it already on the Instagram page. I would say there's a couple that actually caught my eye because they're constantly liking it, constantly adding it. So for me, I can't wait to actually see their story. So there's no catch to it. You don't have to text for two pound or anything like that. It's literally your picture, a story, enter the competition, you know, send us your, that's, that's about it. There's, there's no catch to it. It's literally, it's lunches on Monday. You actually now get to see the vendors, you know, and it's not just any vendor. They're vendors that I feel a bride would wish she had, but some of them are expensive. Some of them are damn expensive. Yeah. Right. Ding didn't want to join us because he, he would have broke the bank. That's why. <laughs> and no, genuinely, we, there's a few people that said, what about Soji? But we didn't want to, as soon as they saw, if you add Soji to the bill, it would now become, oh, it's like, an yeah. African party yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. It's only for Nigerians or yeah. this or that. No. And I thought, you know what? Let's wait to see, see the couple that actually wins. You know, it could be a mixed couple. It could be a, an Afro-Caribbean couple. It could be a white couple, you know, for all I know. So we, we, we don't know yet till don't we worry. get uh, the winner. We're, we're working on something new. So we're, we're planning to expand the band and do something new so we can captivate all the uh, audience as well. So watch out. Okay. <laughs> yes. And, and someone. I, I, funny enough, I've been on one of Soji's live before, and it was turn up. You know, I normally go clubbing every Friday. If it's not Coco Girl, I turn up to Soji's. You know, and he normally, you know, ah, I'm already me, Ben, see, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't give him no money, but I'm guessing because I'm a vendor, he shouts me out. So I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Oh, Remy, um, Jennifer Patrice, who's been on the session today, she asked, do you, do you need a celebrant? So uh, a celebrant is someone that can uh, marry people, basically. You need a what? A, a, a celebrant. Oh, bro. So they, they, uh, they join people together. Oh, they, <laughs> do I want a celebrant? Yeah, you know, Jennifer Patrice. Let's, can we get Jennifer yeah, Patrice to quickly it. come and explain So do one of those is. couples, website, or match.com, that kind of thing? No, no. Mm -hmm. A celebrant is someone who joins the couple and like they the officiating like minister kind of thing. Oh, the officiating yeah. minister. Ah, yeah. ah. Tell okay. her to DM me. Okay, cool. You know, every time I explain what it is, I mess it up. So I just make her to do it herself. But she says that 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 what Mary and Conley said was fine, and uh, we'll get the her officiating to minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She should DM me after. Um, I know people are saying it's Remy's thing. That's one thing I don't want people... And obviously, because we're vendors here, it's not Remy's thing. Because um, it's been done before. If you read the Elo magazine, they gave out about 100,000. 99% of us are Afro-Korean vendors. And it's not Remy's thing. It's a group of 32 vendors. Yes, it was my... You know, for the first time in my life, they're calling me a creative director. I didn't know I'd be a director, you know. <laughs> but I, yes, I put the team together but it's literally 32 strong vendors who have come together. There's about five of them that I've actually put together like, as a panel of judges. Well, it's not, so I don't want people to think, oh, it's Remy's thing. No, no, no. It's, it's a giveaway. It's by Remy, but for the people. That's what I'd say. Amazing. All right. Thank you so much, Remy. Uh, Jennifer's going to get in touch. Anyone else, please get in touch with Remy. Um, the Games Night this Wednesday is going to be hosted by uh, Folly Fresh, Ooh. Um, Laura and Joseph and it's going to be really fun please join us if you can something a bit different during this time and for those of you who are going out and about be safe out there those of you who are having barbecues don't burn yourself mm -hmm. and make sure that you guys just enjoy the rest of your weekend it's really nice and sunny outside lockdowns being lifted but just remember to just stay safe and stay alert as our prime minister says all right. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.